the first thing we're going to look at is what the P means. It's a pulse, right? What is a pulse? A pulse has three components to it. It has a waveform, it has an amplitude, and it has what we call a frequency, right? So when they were looking at this machine, they looked at the waveform first, because what I want to know is if I put energy into my body that already has energy, will it disrupt my energy in a negative way, or will it synergistically work with me and make me better? And what they found was that the specifics for wavelengths in bodies are either sawtooth, which look like this, or they are a square waveform, like this. And when Pat is talking to you about the differences in the sort of mid-sized machine versus the mega machine, and he's saying that this square form rounds off right here, you get the same kind of a wave, but one that doesn't sort of grab you as hard. So it's a gentler kind of a wave. Make sense? So that's kind of important to know. We want to interact with our bodies correctly with the energy that we're producing. Amplitude is about strength. So we talk about that in terms of Teslas and Gauss. So all it is is telling you how much does this machine actually create from an energy perspective. And your frequency is the cycling of things. So how quickly does my waveform and my force move in a cycling complete its round? And you know that with the machine clicking. That's its frequency, right? It builds an energy and then it pulses out and it makes that noise. It builds the energy and it pulses out. So we're looking at the pulse part of it having those three capacity components. If we look at the electromagnetic component, we'll split them into two different things. This is all of your body's work right here, the electricity that we have, the energy that we create, and how it's being utilized. This is kind of where the science gets interesting. This is where physicists get pretty excited about how many things can exist and how many forms simultaneously. How do they interact? Are they really energy, or is it a physical structure? These are all string theory concepts, M theory concepts. Uh, so they're kind of interesting in that sense. What we're going to do is strip it down to some basic stuff. We have positive things and we have negative things. And every piece of movement that occurs in your body is about moving positive and negative structures. So all we're trying to do is build up positive and then shift down negative, okay? So if we have that going on in a cell, then you create an energy and that energy creates a movement and that movement creates a function. And if everything is functioning correctly, then you don't really have a problem. You don't have inflammation. You don't have swelling, therefore you don't have irritation, therefore you don't have pain, therefore things work correctly, and disease structures are non-existent. When energy stops, that's when all of that stuff builds up, and we start to have all these problems. Okay? So moving that energy is very, very, very important. If we look at the mechanics, the, the magnetic component of that, um, we live on a planet in a solar system that interacts with other solar systems. Right? They all produce a field of magnetics that keep us in our positions. That's why we orbit things, not flying around willy-nilly bumping into things. Okay? The sun creates a magnetic field that comes down toward us like this. So if we have the sun, the sun's magnetics come this direction. Our earth, we have a north and a south pole. Our magnetics go out this direction. So we're oriented differently. So the sun comes down toward us like this. When we look at the difference between the layer of the earth and the layer of our atmosphere, we get what has been researched and known and what is really the crux of this machine, which is the Schumann magnetic field. And the Schumann magnetic field actually is a sine wave that runs around the Earth like this. And this is what NASA figured out. If their astronauts did not have the Schumann field, they got sick. So what this machine does is mimics a Schumann field. So what we want is a Hertz or a pulse that has a wave, a strength, and a frequency to be somewhere in the seven and a half range. Now, what's interesting about this is that our brain waves 
when we do EEGs in the medical arena to know how you're working. There hurts in a thinking awake person, the alpha phase is somewhere between seven and 13. So we're looking at mimicking our own gravitational field, which is what predicts how well our body will work. That's what this machine does. Okay? So lots of concepts. You could dig deep in this for hours and hours and hours, but that's primarily what we're looking at. Now, <clears throat> if your body isn't moving its energy correctly, or it's not actually being exposed to the magnetic field, you're gonna get sick and you're gonna get hurt. You're going to be much more likely to injure yourself and need help. And let's think about what our world is right now. We're taking the earth and we're covering it with concrete, which is limiting our, our exposure to our gravitational field. We live primarily in buildings that are metal structures that act as Faraday cages that shield us from the electromagnetic pulse of the world and the earth. That's why techs and hackers love them, it's because no one can find them. Uh, but it does not good things to our body because we're not exposed to what we need to be exposed to. And then what else do we do? We drive cars that have rubber tires. What are rubber, rubber tires? They are insulators from energy, right? Doesn't conduct anything. So now we're not being exposed there. And then when we look at the, the soles of our shoes, primarily what are they? Rubber. So more and more and more, people are going to have more and more problems, right? Because we're not getting either energetically movement what we need to have, or we're not really exposing ourselves to the magnetic field. So it's interesting uh, from that perspective. And what your machine will do is create this type of a frequency, start moving cell structures again, so you're exposing them to what they need from a movement perspective as well as a magnetic perspective. Okay? So if you can kind of run through this with your client, if you want to, uh, they may understand that machine a little bit better. 